I arrived at Stanford in around August of 1966 as a first year law student. Our family were farm, farm workers and we would migrate from the Imperial Valley to the north all the way to the Napa Valley through the San Joaquin Valley every year, uh, worked in harvesting crops. And we would live in tents, uh, we would live in farm labor camps. And so we were at any one place for maybe a month, six weeks, and we were moving on. There was very strict segregation in many areas of our society, and I experienced those as a child. So I had a very clear understanding of uh, discrimination, segregation, lack of opportunity for, at that point, Mexicans. My family, I as a young child, were involved in labor organizing in, in the fields uh, of the San Joaquin Valley. I got a scholarship and I went to San Diego State. Uh, it was a time where across the United States, clearly in California, the number of Hispanic students in attending colleges and universities was very, very low, less than 1%. I had a very successful time at San Diego State and decided to go to Stanford after meeting the dean of the law school, Bayless Manning, who uh, was introduced to me by uh, a graduate of the Stanford Law School, who was a very prominent lawyer in San Francisco, uh, Frank Tatum. The dean told me how he wanted to have more minority students come to Stanford and would I come and help him. And so that's why I went to Stanford Law School. And I was sent out, I was authorized, given a budget as a student to go out and recruit Mexican American students. That would have been in 67, 68. Uh, by that time, I had turned my attention to the broad campus. Okay. I put an ad in the Stanford Daily, and I said that, that all Hispanic students and others who were interested in forming an Hispanic student organization, I forgot what I said then, it was probably Mexican-American, could come to Tresseter Room, whatever. The purpose of the organization was to uh, recruit more students to Stanford. And so at around 7 p.m., I was there, and slowly one, two people began to trickle in. Maybe we, we all knew one, one other person there. And I think that altogether, uh, we reached the grand number of, of around 12. And uh, so that was the first meeting officially of Mexican-American students at Stanford. And we later decided to call ourselves MASC, M-A-S, C, which stood for Mexican American Student Confederation. We started thinking then about our goals, and it was to increase the number of students, Mexican American students at Stanford. That was our top priority goal. We started drafting position papers for a rationale as to why the university should do this. And there was an associate provost who took great interest and that was Ray Bacchetti. And we started a pilot program for admitting Mexican-American students, undergraduates, freshmen. I remember Ray Bacchetti and I visiting a number of schools. We admitted into a pilot program, I believe it was 10 students. I, I still remember a lot of those students. After that pilot program, uh, we kept advocating for a much broader program. We had a list of demands that and it was to admit a hundred freshmen, Mexican Americans, to hire Mexican American in the admission office, in counseling, in the dean's office. Uh, those were our first goals. Uh, eventually, the, the university agreed that they would do this. And I remember that the admissions office uh, went out and they couldn't find sufficient candidates. So we said, we proposed that we would put up a, a recruiting campaign. And so I put together a team of 10 students and basically it was sending these students back to their home state and to their area to visit all the high schools and come back with candidates. And they just went to those schools and it was very convincing 
because they said, I'm Mexican-American, and I'm a student at Stanford, and you can go there too. And it was very credible because they were students. So they came back with applications. I don't think we admitted 100 the first year, uh, but it was close to that. I was a junior in high school. There was an outreach effort at Stanford to try to find the first Stanford Latino class, which was going to enter in 1969. And they sent recruiters all over the country. There was a gentleman here at Stanford who was vice president. Uh, his name was Luis Nogales. And so Luis Nogales came from Calexico, which was a community on the border in Imperial County. So he decided to send a recruiter into Imperial County to go to his high school and, and, and recruit Latino students from his high school to come. That recruiter stopped at my high school. Luckily, one of my teachers felt that I would be qualified to get into Stanford. And so she pulled me out of my junior class, of a junior class, even though they, they were only talking to seniors, and pulled me out of my junior class and said, you need to listen to this recruiter because he's going to talk to you about a university that I think you should consider going to. And so that's how I got exposed to Stanford.